If you're not new to the channel, then you'll know that this skill saw is one of my favorite power tools. So why now, in the hottest Texas summer that we've had on record in the past 20 years, do I find myself sawing 2x4s with a handsaw on the ground in the garage? Well, it's probably for the same reason that I once decided to build this deck swinging a hammer and nails the whole way through. It's just the kind of maniac I am. And it came out great, so who cares if I maybe had a heat stroke? I'm not sure why these ideas come to me in the middle of the summer, but the challenge now is to build out a workshop in the corner of this garage, start making awesome projects, starting with nothing but a basic set of tools. I need a quick work surface off the ground, so I'm headed to the hardware store. I'm picking up a couple of two by fours and a few four by fours. Look at this grain direction. You want grain that runs through the wood, avoiding the center of the tree. The center, that's called the pith, and that is really considered waste wood for furniture making. Uh, it's just gonna have a ton of wood movement. It's gonna warp and twist and split. It's fine structurally, and really it would be fine for what I'm using it for, but I just generally try to avoid that. So let's tie these babies down and get to it. I recently saw a truck take a left turn and sling out a couple of sheets of plywood. Even for a small load, tie it down. With this overpriced shoelace, I can get this thing tied down as snug as all get out. It won't shift. I don't even have to untangle my strap clamps. These knots tie up so fast and with the magical force called physics, throw a little loop in there and you could squeeze pine tar out of these sticks. Now, I'm not recommending that you only use a little bit of paracord to tie up your lumber, nor am I recommending that you rest it up on your tailgate. I'm just showing you what I'm doing and take it for what it's worth, which might not be much, because after all, I've got one finger that's a little shorter than the others. Two hundred twenty-four thousand miles. Still purrs like a kitten. Coolest part about these knots is that they do not slip or loosen, yet they still pop off super easy. That anchor knot is called a bowlin, and no idea what that loop knot is called, or if it even has a name at all. I've pared down my tools and workshop to the absolute best, the essentials, which is exactly what my Ridge, Wallet, and Key Case are all about. Minimalist, slim, RFID blocking, everyday carry essentials. The Wallet holds up to 12 cars and room for cash. The Key Case keeps them tight, no jingle, and you can get up to 30% off when you buy the wallet and Key Case together. The insane thing is that right now, Rich has partnered up with Hennessy, and you can win a 2023 Hennessy Bronco Velociraptor. Enter for free at ridge.com slash frank. Get some awesome gear, and every dollar you spend gives you an additional entry. Plus, if you use my link, you'll get 10 bonus entries. Use my code frank for 10% off your order. Big thanks to Ridge for sponsoring this video. I need a work surface off the ground, so first I'm going to make a couple of sawhorses. Most sawhorses make horrible work surfaces, so I'll show you guys a solution for that. And believe me, if there's ever a time to not use a handsaw, it's cutting wood right on the ground. Seriously, get a chair, a stool, whatever. Better yet, jigsaw, circular saw, miter saw, pretty much anything other than a handsaw. But I guess I'm just proving a point here. Not exactly sure what that point is, but here we go. To make the main section of the sawhorse, I'm taking these three foot long boards and basically making a wooden I-beam out of it. So drill a little hole and screw it together with some deck screws. The I-beams make the top of the sawhorse nice and rigid, plus they're going to give the legs the perfect amount of splay. And in case you're wondering, my back felt great bending over and touching my toes for 30 minutes. This is as close as I get to doing yoga. Now with this nicely formed I-beam, which is going to be the top of the sawhorse, going to attach the legs. But the key here is that I only attach all four legs with only one screw at first. And the reason for only attaching with one screw at first is to get rid of most of the wobble. Of course it's not going to be perfect, especially on a garage floor that's not flat. 
but it's good enough for government work. Once it's as wobble free as I care to get it, I go ahead, drill some pilot holes and attach two more screws into the lower part of that I-beam and that's gonna lock those legs into place. Once all the legs are screwed together, I give this thing the same test that pretty much I use on every project that I make. It passed the test. Makeshift sawhorse work surfaces usually have something to do with throwing a piece of plywood on top of them. It's super bouncy. I'm going to make an upgrade for this one. I'm just cutting this board down a little bit, making it shorter, and I just want to say, already, being able to saw this while standing up has made a huge difference. Being able to stick to the line is so much easier when I'm standing up. I'm going to make a notch that fits right into the top of the sawhorse to hold these cross beams in place, but I don't want it to be tight. If it's tight, it won't be able to slide forward and backwards. This one looks like it'll be snug, so I'm going to move that line out by about like an eighth of an inch. The notch is going to be about an inch deep, so I'll just mark that with the uh, marking gauge and cut this down to the line. There's more than one way to make a notch, but considering it was 107 degrees outside and probably at least that in the garage, I just went with what I thought would be the quickest. I came up with the idea for wanting to make this little upgrade for my sawhorses even before I moved into this garage. When I was working on my six board chest project, which you gotta check it out, awesome video, a lot of fun. Uh, putting the finish on that thing, I had it elevated on a couple like blocks of wood in the floor of the garage. That's when I decided that this was something I was gonna make. And then it just so happened that it was gonna really end up helping me in a different way uh, as I start building out this garage workshop. and this turns out to be way too tight. But that's okay, who doesn't enjoy a little pairing action from time to time? Also just scooped off those sharp edges because I didn't want them to break off or anything like that. And this is much more like it. I actually end up going a little bit further, but you get the picture. And here's where I run into a little hiccup in my plan. So here's the first clue in that this one is fitting tight and they all should be fitting loose to be able to slide up and down on that top of the sawhorse. This thing's barely sliding at all. This is by far the simplest project I've made on a YouTube video and yet, whoopsie. So now it's working as intended. I could put a piece of plywood on top of this and it would actually have some support and stability, bring them together and have extra support for a piece of wood that's maybe not long enough to span between the, the horses. I can spread them apart just a little bit depending on you know what width of wood I'm working with, maybe a panel, uh, working directly in the center of the board, cutting off the edge with extra support. I've even got a spot where I can put some sharpening stones, which that chisel was in desperate need of sharpening. It looked like it was working all right, but I'm telling you it was not very sharp. And once I'm done using this to make a workbench, I can also use this for finishing and sanding or anything like that. Any size project, small, large, it doesn't really matter. Those things will slide apart. It's collapsible. It's gonna be fantastic for uh, doing all sorts of finishing work that I don't wanna do right on top of the workbench. Comes right apart, stacks up easy, nice and compact, and it's going to be just the right height for going underneath my lumber rack that you can see up against the wall over there. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take it easy.